Happy Sunday, March 17th, 2024. Let's do a quick sound check and then we'll get started with our channeling of the Galactic Council 9. How was everyone's weekend? Hold your questions, please, until um, the end of this very brief World Predictions update. Um, it's coming in brief because we already did one, you know, um, at the top of the month. And we only have a few updates in each of the, the segments that we discussed earlier. Um, but there are some shifts that do need to be discussed for sure. And then after we go over the brief update of shifts and changes for world predictions, um, I will be taking your questions from chat. Thank you so much. Please, um, it really supports the channel. If you like and subscribe and share this video, turn on the all notifications, and then you'll for sure know when I come live. Yeah. So what has happened? Um, we did channel a cryptocurrency and financial advisor um, from the year, I believe he was 2029. Yeah. Early, retired early um, from the whole New York stock scene. He is amazing. He's over on my Patreon channel at tier one that's linked up to the top of the chat. This weekend, um, we also have a really powerful class, and that's by request. Oh, I'm so sorry for the nose stuff. It's the same thing with ice skating. Whenever I channel or ice skate, nose runs. <laughs> so um, you guys were talking about working through time and how to circumvent time, how to shift time. And you definitely wanted to do so by learning to astral travel. So I have created that masterclass for all levels coming up. It involves a lot of gentle alchemy techniques, meditation, trancing, quick techniques that also keep you safe and grounded. It's called Foundations of Astral Travel for Healings, channeling the Guardians of Time. So the Guardians of Time are a unique set of beings who are responsible for the dualism and creation of time. And when you can work with them, you can as well get through time and shift your life when you're not as attached to time and worried about it and concerned about it. And then you can ask to travel more appropriately and manifest more appropriately. So save all your questions, if you don't mind, um, to the very end of this channeling. We're just going to do a brief uh, global predictions, world predictions update. And then I'll go ahead and take the questions. But if you're just coming on now, just save all your questions. Or if you posted them already, just hold them, put them on your notepad and copy and paste later once we get done with this brief update. Um, by continuing this video, you agree to our terms and conditions, um, which are listed in the video description and at the top of this super chat, right? Um, so currency valuations, global economy, some natural disasters. We're going to go over this in certain areas of some of the visions that the Galactic Council have given me. Um, and, and it's interesting to say the least, it's interesting because, you know, after the, the council's prediction of the fallout on the 16th, which did happen, which you guys didn't think was going to happen because it went high, high, high. And then on the 16th, um, we have some interesting follow-ups to that. Um, so regarding currency valuations, um, the Euro is actually going lower starting the second week of April, according to the council, the dollar is going higher at equal time frame, like really like 24 hours apart. Not really that unusual. It tends to work that way between the evaluations of the euro and the dollar. Um, the currency is lower in Iraq by August, according to the council, higher in Vietnam. And, and only with both of these just by a little bit, not like huge valuation differences. Um, the currency is uh, higher than than the previous value of, of what it is right now. It's going to be a lot higher in Venezuela, um, probably about a quarter higher. So something interesting has to happen in a positive realm there. And that's by fall of this year. They've got the guardians of the time that I'm working with did not say exactly what month, unfortunately. Um, but we do get that as the current alignment for Venezuela. Um, 
So this was really, really interesting. The beginnings of a rise in an outdated off-market Zimbabwe currency um, coming back by mid-year of 2025, around June in this current alignment. We'll keep checking in because things can always shift, as you know by now, of watching my work, right? Um, so... Some people are asking me to ask the council, when will the dollar and the euro become revalued and devalued? Um, and again, we cover that a little bit, but the dollar and the euro, according to the Galactic Council of Nine, are nowhere near being fully devalued right now or at any point in the next few years. So um, those of you waiting on dollar crashes, euro crashes, so that new systems can be built, those new systems are not built yet. And um, the current alignment is that you're not ready for those new systems. So that's why they're not created. And there's still a lot of attachment to the old system still. So that is nowhere near. Um, we're not, we're nowhere near a dollar crash. Some will be happy about that and some won't change very drastically, but the council advises that if you want change drastically, you could also not have any access to any monies while those new systems are being built. And overall 3D, the, the third dimensional collective of humanity is not ready to not have access to their money. That's when looting, rioting and other things would happen. And that's why that is not in alignment for any time in the next few years. Again, everything could change. These are just potentials. We're looking at three di third dimensional alignment, um, which is where the majority of Earth is right now. Okay. Um, for those of you, if this is not your timeline, you're in four and 5D alignments. Um, keep doing your thing and support um, people who aren't, which are a lot of people, billions and billions of people. All right. Need your help. That's why I give these predictions. Okay, so natural disasters, what was coming up was Texas. You know, it, it really was very indicative of the time um, just a couple years ago where Texas had this major snowy blizzard icy storm, like smack in the middle of summer. Very, very similar thing. Blizzardy, icing, not a lot of snow, but just a, a lot of ice at heavy winds, um, kind of at the end of May and beginning of June. So it's kind of like between spring and summer in an unusual time where things are really hot. And it wasn't um, all of Texas is hot, but this was in a place around Albuquerque that was particularly hot because Albuquerque is particularly hot all the time. And then when I looked at Texas again, um, I'm seeing some flooding um, around the Houston area in the suburbs there of the the I used to live there, so I'm very familiar with these suburbs being um, the um, what it, the Sugarland suburbs um, and the kind of South Houston, Southeast Houston suburbs. A lot of people experiencing a lot of flooding in those very flat areas there. Um, early, early fall this year. Okay. Um, we also got some hits on a particularly large hurricane headed um, in the hurricane season this fall near Miami um, that was fairly um, strong. It, it was not, uh, it was a very scary and it was predicted to be like one of the strongest, it will be predicted to be one of the strongest hurricanes that Florida has ever had. But then it um, shifts and goes down to about half of its strength by the time it's landfall and then turns into a tropical storm. But it still causes a lot of flooding and a lot of problems, all right? So if you're near Miami this hurricane season, you just want to keep your eye on that. And if they tell you to go, please don't do the typical standard hurricane, you know, Florida hurricane thing, the Florida native thing where you just want to hunker down. It's not a good idea. Just go, board up and go. Um, another tropical storm coming in near the end of the hurricane season near Crystal River um, turns at the last minute um, and backs off. So, you know, Crystal River residents, so it's kind of it's out there. But you guys are incredibly in the 5D realm already, so you know how to shift this kind of thing. So when you hear about it, don't worry about it. Just start doing your work and start working with the great spirit of air and the great spirit of water and doing you know, being your typical badass self, um, and you will be fine. Um, okay, so I wanted to talk because I got some strong hits um, during my astral travel by location experiences just last night, and I was asking the council, is there something that I need to be aware of regarding the ET crafts? Because there are a lot of things, okay? 
And we talked about this in the world predictions for the year, the 2023 world, 2024 world prediction, excuse me. Um, but but there's it's coming up now. So we need to discuss it because it's very, very soon. We have more unusual um, ball type, like one, two, three, four, five, like five in a row, and they come in in a row. And it isn't um, people like to to talk to talk about this kind of craft as being um, in association with um, space SpaceX. I think that's what you're calling it, Elon Musk satellites and whatnot. And it is not that. So I want you to be mindful as those crafts come in. Um, five at a time in these small ball shaped crafts that go really fast in the skies of Belgium, um, in Southern Ukraine, um, the same thing in Northern Texas, Arizona, Western Colorado, Central Idaho, and Washington state. You're going to be seeing little droplets of these things this month and next in these ball crafts. Um, and that's okay to see them, but then um, there's reports of them landing um, and, and residents are also talking about landings that they saw a landing and that they, you know, saw damage to crafts. And then when they would go out to look at it, suddenly there would be this, um, the, the visions that I got of, of all these were very, very similar in all these landings. They, they don't just fly through the sky. Some of them are crashing and some of them are crashing in heavily like um, wooded, very dense forest areas. Um, one of them near a lake as well. One of them right on the edge of a very big lake in Washington State um, with a lot of wooded area there as well as Washington State is. But it's um, it's that it leaves these unique burn trails that go in circles. And by the time people get to it, suddenly it's been, it's just gone. They have something that's cleaned it up. It's just like, okay, but we saw a craft. And then when you try to go back to it in daylight, because all of these um, landings are crashes, if you will, occur in, you know, in nighttime, time, you know, middle of the night type of scenarios um, between 12 and 4 a.m. is what the council said. And then people were like, well, I went out there and I saw this craft um, on my property or on a neighboring property. Um, and then you go back the next day and it's gone. It's gone. It's been cleaned up. Right. <laughs> so, Yeah. Um, I did want to talk because I got an update on the Trump and Biden um, president situation and the council said it is at a deadlock up until the bitter end um, and then electoral vote takes over. Um, Biden is still projected to win, but only by the, the skin of his aging teeth. Uh, <laughs> my words, not the council's. If Biden wins, um, there's a problem. There's a problem because this he he becomes very ill. Something happens and he needs some time off. And this um this female steps up um, as he steps out. I, I got this vision of this um, lighter skinned African American female stepping up, um, hair about a little past shoulder length, straight thick hair. Um, and she steps up during his time for a while, and then he comes back in and finishes his term. That is the current. Um, projection. Yeah. And for those of you um, expecting that ROK, RFK is going to get a win, I keep looking at it. And um, for the most part, I agree with you. We do need something very, very different other than these two, but I don't think we're going to get it this term. I don't think we're going to get it this term. I just don't. And I don't know a lot about politics. I don't personally follow all that or become deeply invested. I'm not a Republican. I'm not anything that's one way or the other. I'm an independent voter. Um, and I have always voted independent because that's what's been best for the U.S. economy in particular and, and for human rights and women's rights and all of that. Um, so, yeah, this is kind of an issue here with the, the odd way that a win happens. And that's just like so deadlocked. And we can, we're going to keep looking at it because the council says it also could shift. But the last two times they've given me predictions, it's been a Biden win. Okay, let's go for crypto. We're going to be looking at Ethereum, AI, uh, the AI coin called Scotty is on the rise. Um, Josh fully covered that a lot more um, in the Humans for the Future thing that I posted, um, that channeling that I recently did last Thursday, last week. He covered this in deeper detail, but um, I'll just go over some of the things that the council is wanting to talk about today with it. So Ethereum... Um, and, and Bitcoin are on the rise 
um, after a fall yesterday. And that, like, I'm going to keep looking at this, but for the rest of the year, it's up, 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 up. There's like no downs according to the current predictions um, about cryptocurrency from the Galactic Council. XRP is doing nothing important this month. It's like pff, silent as crickets and not worthy of investment. Um, AI Scotty and green Bitcoin are going to be things that you deeply want to consider. And again, I'm not um, a financial advisor uh, or crypto advisor at all. Please ask your own financial experts about this. Um, but, but my intuitive prediction here is that AI Scotty and green pit, green Bitcoin, according to the council and the humans from future that I talked to just on Thursday, they said, that's going to be like the big thing now. Um, for the next year, that that's something you really want to get in on because um, AI Scotty is going to explode in a great way. Um, so is Green Bitcoin. So Ripple, there's some interesting news with, you know, Ripple this month is at a standstill, as many of you know. And it's just like in this court case that's happening, they just kind of keep throwing more paperwork at Ripple and all this legal paperwork creates a lot of havoc as this standstill continues for investors. Um, and then they don't win. They don't win. Um, and then we have to look at like what that means. But the council also said that does not mean a seriously serious thing that's going to cause you to lose your money. If you did invest in Ripple, you are going to get your money back and it's going to be okay. They're just going to have to start over in a wholly regulated, completely different way. All right. Which is a real pain. And they're just kind of is putting things on, on hold for a while. Yeah. Yep. 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 Oh, Gail Brown, you'd be nice. I don't follow all this. <laughs> I will call you if you're being mean in my chat straight out. I don't play. That's what our moderators are there for. They they will put you in a time out if you're going to get mean with me. Um, God, I'm not a politician. I just, I show you what my vision say. And if you want to attribute it to Kamala Harris, you're welcome to. I just show you exactly what the vision says. Okay. Um, let's see. Gold on the rise this month. Yeah. Green coin is what it's called. It's a, a part of, it's a, something you need to keep your eye on. Okay, gold on the rise this month in a big way. So if you look at um, the high that happened last year in gold around September, according to the council, that's going to be up this month significantly by about a third. So what causes that? That's very, very interesting. Um, yeah, so silver is down in value by the end of this month, um, but only for about 10 days, okay? Okay. Um, palladium is interesting. It's on the rise slowly after a peak of double its current value by September of this year, around the third week in September is the current projection. We're going to be keeping an eye on that because the council have asked, has asked me to tell all of you to keep your eye on palladium. Okay. So wonderful. Um, and, and those are it. I'm going to start taking your, your stuff now. All right. Cardano. They didn't tell me anything. Let's ask them real quick. Slow. It's a slow up. So it's current value right now. It will slowly peak um, just in tiny little increments now until the end of July. And then it'll be valued as uh, something you definitely want to, you want to, you want to keep your eye on that. It's not like flying off the charts, but it's definitely on the rise and it's only going to keep going in these smaller increments for the next few years. There's no down points for Cardano. If you're, so if you're waiting on a down point, there is a down point for that one where you can come in and right now is the down point afford it now if you want to as always ask your stuff solana is absolutely on the rise but we get some interesting things with solana um solana is going up by about two-thirds of its current value by november of this year it has a crash a super crash by about a third of that value on november the 10th that's what the council is saying for that one so november the 10th all right and that's just, yeah, that's very interesting. We're going to keep looking at that. Yeah. Polka dot is a big old nothing. Like council's like, don't even just don't no. no. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So now I'm going to be taking your questions. Let's see. Green. Yeah. Green Bitcoin is what it is. 
uh, John that you need to keep your eye on. Yeah, for Nimbleful, for that one, give me give me all the qualifying factors. I'm not politically advanced enough to even understand, you know, what that is. But I can tell you the visions that I'm getting if you want. Names are hard. I'm just getting like visions of, of the person. All right. How is Montana for the future? Um, it gets colder than ever over the course of the next 10 years and then hot and then strangely hot by 10 and a half years from now. Um, and in a difficult way that is, um, it's not great to live in during those times for three years after that one. It is surprisingly warm and Montana's not really used to all that, you know, and they don't, they won't know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, Arkansas, let me ask and see if we get any visions for that one. We have some flooding around the Ozark Mountains area during um, the spring rains that go down. It goes down into the valley around April the 13th to the 15th. So people living there in the valley right there in the Ozark Mountains um, by the rivers that are going in that direction. Just you got some vacation property out there, whatever you're doing, you might want to not be going, um, not be going there during that time. Okay. Oregon has some tremendous fires this year. For those of you asking about Oregon, um, it just looks really, really difficult around July 17th of 2024 is the current projection for fires there this year. Um, and, and it's, it's not great. It's in the rural, in, in the rural areas up in the, the, the higher mountainous areas there. Yeah. Uh, no, there is not, to answer this question, there is not going to be a war between Russia and Finland in, in the next, um, right now, that seems to be not a problem for the next five to six years. You seem to be really safe, Finland and Russia, in that particular regard with uh, any ongoing relations. Um, it's only going to be peaceful over the course of that time frame between Finland and Russia in, in that time frame. Okay, we're, and we'll keep looking at it. I'll let you know. You want to ask again. We will see if there will be any shifts. Mm -hmm. um, we do have another very strong fire coming out around um, around the bush uh, south of Queensland this year for Australia that you need to be concerned about um, the third week of July between like right there on that, that time frame at the end of that week. Yeah, and that's a hard one to, to control. Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm just looking at your questions. What do you see for, let's see, Alton X, PRT. Um, the council is saying for that one, it, it's like a merry-go-round of ups and downs over the coast over the course of the next seven years with not too much going on that you can manage for generational wealth. So you can spend some money, make some money, spend some money, make some money there, but just pennies to the dollar. It's just not that incredible. It's not going to be an, an incredible investment. Again, always ask your own financial team and advisors. This is just what we're seeing right now. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jane, give me the specific area. That's a vast area to look at. There are some things going on in California this year, but tell, ask me more specifically so that we can kind of hone in and, and do some remote viewing with the council for you. Um, relations are odd. South Korea is going to get strangely peaceful. Um, in terms of their interactions, like what I mean by that is not that they're not peaceful people. I mean that North Korea 
is going to actually give them a break for a while. And then there's some problems that are pretty foreseen between North Korea and South Korea again by November of this year. And then there is in peace. There's some problems rising in those areas of the world. Uh, early next year, we have North Korea um, going to Taiwan really strongly in a non-peaceful fashion. So I wasn't very happy at all about those predictions, but I kind of had been expecting them because they've been talking about that for a long time. Uh, Reddit crypto, what is it? How will it do? Not well. The council went <laughs> like made the noise that they make when things are just not even great. Yeah, not great. We already discussed um, Ripple and XRP. Yeah. Um, I don't see right now any large, for those of you asking about large earthquakes in New Zealand, the council isn't giving me any projections on that at all uh, coming up for this year. We do have some smaller fires that are controllable, but nothing out of the ordinary for New Zealand in that, in that particular way for this year. And we will keep looking at it. If you want to keep asking, we'll keep checking back in with the council on the predictions for that. Um, Sacramento has a pretty um, strong, you know, over six earthquake around October of this year that they need to watch out for. San Diego has an even bigger one. Um, the, the last week of June is the current prediction for that. And we'll keep you posted if it's changing, but those two areas this year, um, and, and timing can change in terms of like by days and weeks. So we kind of have to keep looking at it for the timing of it. All right. Okay. I'm not sure if I should talk about that in this video or if it should be a different one because many of you are asking these questions and I'm wondering if those of you here today are interested in this discussion, in, in this channeling, in this live, but many people have been asking to, for me to answer the questions about the humans from the future, um, years 2100 and 2300 in relation to the New Earth Order, the RRO, um, and the, the United Nations of one, um, or the United Nations order, they changed the name twice. <laughs> um, but there's three factions of, um, of people and lands. Um, so what would you like to know? If you want to know, just say, yes, I would like to know. And we will answer that. But just generally speaking, um, the UNO is um, a world group, a faction which believes a lot in artificial interface, both with the human body and medical advancements uh, in the home, uh, everywhere. Um, and they believe in the advancement of technology in relation to the human body. So for me, I look at it and I can't understand it. It looks a little freaky and scary. So that's that. The um, RRO... I got the impression like when I do my bilocation and remote viewing to talk to this unique sect of people, they are all about growing on the land. They're similar to the New Earth Order, the NEO, but they um, they are all about um, regenerative agriculture, building things by hand. They're a little feisty. You know, that's why they call themselves the, the rebel order because, yeah, they 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 will fight. You know, they all own guns, you know, and they, they all will question you if you come up to their property. They're very protective, uh, very offensive and defensive, but generally speaking, just incredibly loving people as well who just believe in personal rights and freedoms. And then the NEO is about creating more of the spiritual um, united like concept of Earth that would be what you would call what you New Agers would call 5D Earth. Right. When did they begin developing? Um, they began developing around uh, 2100. Yeah. And that's just the direction of where Earth is going right now. And they're all in peace with each other. There aren't any wars in this time that what I've noticed with the humans from the future. Um, but the NEO is they're, they're not religious. They're in nature. They're all about um, working with all the elements of earth. 
Yeah. We did already discuss ET sightings in the U.S. for right now, for what's coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Which group will Italy be a part of? Well, Italy primarily goes towards the RRO and the majority. Of, they believe in independence and freedom in that timeline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's a good question. Um, how do you know your spirit guides are telling the truth? Well, it's not necessarily about that. A lot of people like to look at the shadow side of predictions as being right or wrong or accurate or inaccurate. What we're looking at is timelines. And we're looking at the unique density and dimensional timeline that you are aligned to. So if a lot of people in 3D alignment, and they look at predictions, um, and we're given a prediction in a 3D alignment, which is, you know, 3D Earth, um, but you're saying a 4D or 5D alignment, that may not be true for you. And if I'm predicting a 5D alignment, and you're in a 3D alignment, that may not be true for you. So those are potentials based upon the alignment in your unique density and dimensional expression of how you live your life and where you are aligned in your timeline. But what I do is I will give um, the general predictions for 3D alignment, and then I'll turn around and give the 5D alignment. And that is why there are contradictions, because you are very different people with very different mindsets, with very different energies. You understand that? And, 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 this, and the more you can understand time and how time actually works, because time is not a facet of reality, um, it really isn't real, it's only real in 3D worlds, then the more you can understand that, um, the more you're going to understand this answer. Yeah. Uh, we did already cover the Trump-Biden stuff, so for those of you just coming in, just scroll back later. Yeah. It's, it's, I feel like I'm kind of darned if I do, darned if I don't with the Trump Biden predictions because you guys are so split, like absolutely 50 50. And, and each of these guys need to be completely out. Each, each of them do not need to be um, there in the White House in the US. There needs to be someone else. It's time for a change. Uh, is Southern Utah RRO? Um, they are. They are very RRO. <laughs> yeah, I know that because I used to live there and that's where that's headed. Yeah. But that's not bad. Southern Utah is a very safe place to be. If you there's some place to move, there's just aren't a lot of properties and homes right now. Um, is Kate Middleton okay? Council thinks she is. I don't really want to touch that one with a 20-foot pole, but in so far as what I'm sensing right now from them and their, what they've told me about her is that there's some physical stuff going on. It's true about the surgery. And then there's also some, you know, depression and anxiety and basic, you know, tired mother stuff going on. And she needs our grace. She needs her privacy. Um, yeah. So she has not been taken hostage or anything. She will be back to you soon, but she needs her privacy and we need to give her some grace right now. No one needs to be told anything about her if she's not wanting to express um, what she's going through that is personal, regardless of um, her position in the world. She has, um, no one has any right to know until she is ready to tell them. But I'd say it's some mental distress, basic mental distress, basic stress, basic anxieties as well as some health problems, which she will likely never discuss to you. Yeah. Or to anyone. Like she will keep that very close to her heart because it's incredibly personal. Yeah. But she's okay. Uh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by the golden zone? I'm not familiar. I try to stay out of terminologies you know, in the spiritual world, when people use terminologies, I don't tend to have them in my filter. So tell me what you mean by that. <laughs> what is the golden zone? Um, I actually, for the three days of darkness situation, we talked about that. I'm trying to think 
Which humans from the future recently did that? It could have been Josh. Anya, do you remember? Um, basically, I think it was Josh. And what the council is reminding us for that particular alignment with that, it is a 3D alignment, and it has to do with a hacking in our banking systems. Yes, some of it is already beginning. Um, yeah, and it's three days of internet darkness. It's internet and banking systems is what that is. And that is coming up this year, but it's not darkness in so far as no lights, no electricity. It's darkness in so far as what will people do when they don't have internet for a short amount of time? And you'd be surprised. People do freak out <laughs> by just not having access to the internet for that very short amount of time. I say, take some time off, but people go just, they just go alpha. They just completely go mad during the time. You have looting, rioting, all the standard stuff, particularly in the U.S. <clears throat> and we talked about that in deeper uh, detail um, in the Humans from the Future year 2029 with Josh this past Thursday. Yep. When will housing become affordable in the Bay Area of California? Um, the council said right now if you mean affordable in so far as under $500,000, um, not anytime soon, like not even in the next, it's going to be around 2028 to 2029, whenever that happens. Yeah. Which banks are not safe? Josh covered that in detail. You guys are welcome to see it. I don't want to go too deeply into that. But I'll tell you right now, um, it's Wells Fargo is not it. Not it, not it. Get out of there. You guys knew that though, right? You saw their first problem and it, it just is going to continue. Um, okay, so insofar as Tesla predictions, I think Josh did cover that in detail as well. But just generally speaking, right now, Tesla is continuing to do well. Um, but they're, they will have a competitor by year 2029 and they're not going to be expecting it. They, they're expecting to continue to rule this industry and they are not going to rule this industry. There will be a competitor of someone who builds the same thing that is affordable, um, much more affordable than how they're doing it. And then they have to kind of keep up and decide what to do. <laughs> and that's all coming right now at a current projected time frame of year 2029. Yeah. There is no great flash of light right now. I'm not sure where these predictions are coming from, but according to, and these are just with my counsel, it's more of what we call the solar flash, and that is a consciousness shift. And it's not necessarily something that happens in a big boom or a big flash of light or anything solar related with the sun. It has to do with our consciousness slowly shifting, but in major ways. And it has happening a little bit at a time because we can't handle otherwise mentally. People are already so absolutely exhausted with cost of living and so many things. And overall, the economy is looking like it's getting harder this year, particularly in the U.S. and Canada, in the U.K., in Ireland. Um, you know, and it's in, in most European or, or Canadian um, and U.S. areas, the economy is trickling into some very tough places with a lot of rising gas prices, rising in food prices, rising in cost of living this year. So this year isn't a good time uh, for um, it continues to be a, a big problem with shifting of global power as a whole for this year uh, with some dramatic changes, you know, particularly in relations between the U.S. and China. Yeah. So a lot coming up with economic shifts this year, and it doesn't look too great for the uh, third density perspective in the third density alignment, the 3D alignment uh, with the economy. Yeah. Nope. We're not seeing a flash in, in, in that way um, in April or in September, October in that way, uh, Rocco, but People were asking questions for a while with um, this particular star turning into a supernova. I think it was like Betelgeuse or something like that. Um, and you guys have been asking me and asking me. So I finally asked the council and they said, no time soon. Do not worry about that. And even when it does go and turn into a supernova, it is not going to hurt anyone on Earth. It's too far away for you to be ultimately concerned about it. Yeah. So don't worry about that. 
Yeah. Yep. So the energy, though, of the Beetle Guy Supernova is what you should be concerned about in a positive way, because that is associated with the solar flash, which is a consciousness, but not a flash in the sky. It is an energy consciousness that is affecting many people who are headed into 5D alignment, who are really um, following a strong awakening process. Right. So, yeah, we, we do have the rising of consciousness in association with that supernova, right? Yeah, and you're going to see more of that. When I look at, um, you know, the, the, the whole industry there in California and Silicon Valley industries in the world this year, um, there is a problem in California with lots more layoffs in tech that continue this year. A lot more layoffs, not just Florida, but many Silicon Valley style um, companies um, are going to be experiencing problems. Yeah. California does make, um, sorry, Australia. To answer your question, Michelle, Australia makes some beautiful changes to head towards going green this year, um, but it doesn't fully affect everyone right away. But they make some beautiful changes. Um and it is wonderful. It's wonderful, but it's just, it's slow is what the, the council is saying about green energy for Australia for this year is slow. It's on the rise, but it's slow and not affecting everyone yet. Yeah. Yeah. Is Josh one of your guides? I wish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Josh is like this little hot shot, 20, 28 year old, retired early, you know, billionaire that is just brilliant with money. Um, but everything that he told me, like, I didn't really believe it. And now it's starting to come to pass. I was like, yeah, yeah, that seems not believable. And now it is. So yeah, I kind of wish he was one of my guys, <laughs> but he's way too busy for me. So he has to even like make room when I go visit, make time. Yeah. So I have to go into another realm to talk to him. I have to ask for travel and bilocate and do the thing. So it would be hard to uh, get him as a guide because he's just a human loving his life. Yeah. <laughs> uh, with the South African economy, um, it does not improve dramatically right away. Not right now. It continues to go down. Um, and you guys have some interesting things coming up in the elections because the person that needs to get out of there um, does does not like like the person that, that gets voted in is not who you want. And um, there's a lot of corruption there um, and you don't suspect it to change. But then something happens where that person gets pulled out of office due to um, something legal that's happening and they have to go through court and they could end up in jail and then your economy begins to get, begins to get better over the course of eight and a half months as the current projected timeline for um, the South African economy and its improvement after your election. So eight and a half months um, after the election coming up. Yeah, my goodness. Okay, with Portugal and earthquakes. You have some mild ones coming this year um, around the third week of November, but it's something to deeply be concerned about right now. Yeah. Um, no, XRP, XRP will not do that this cycle, uh, Jose. It just kind of is so flatlined. <laughs> Okay, uh, what do you see that is going to happen on the eclipse in April? This, yeah, the council has talked about this eclipse and they're saying right now that it is a shift in consciousness where a lot of people who are holding um, a lot of bitterness and anger and remorse and this, this what, the, what the council calls a tragically bitter consciousness, um, you are kind of losing that in the eclipse coming because you're tired of being mad and you went from mad to sad in your typical stages of grief as you understand what you need to shift um, in, in your own 3D alignment. So a lot of people who are deeply fear-based in regards to governments and money and the economy, 
Um, if you feel like you're upset about all the things that are happening in very corrupt governments around the world and um, you're feeling disempowered, the, that shifts because you get tired of feeling like your happiness, your freedom, your abundance is going to lie in someone else's hands. So you have a lot of people waking up with this eclipse in April and deciding that you're tired of feeling stuck disempowered and that someone else is in control of your financial destiny, of your career destiny and of your health. Right? Um so you begin to come out and make those changes. But it's an interesting shift. It is a really interesting shift because people who are also typically not in fear and deep compassion and a 5D alignment may also switch places with people who are angry and frustrated and bitter and in a former 3D alignment. So it's like a shift of energies where you will see some corruption coming about um, in two major leaders in our spiritual industry. And people get mad and they start saying, wow, I really trusted this person for many, many years. And now there's this big scandal. So there's two major scandals coming out right around the same time in the spiritual industry, in the spiritual world. Um, and, and many people are going to be just really a lot of people who follow those are going to be um, one male, one female, by the way, um, are going to be let down and kind of shifting and taking over. It's like a switch. Um in 3D, 5D alignment. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And no, not religious. This is like definitely uh, spiritual industry leaders, you know, and people find out some things that have been just behind the scenes and it just gets nasty. So that's, that's in, you know, the, the new age realm. Mm hmm. So that's a great question. Anais Trace says, uh, Anais Trace, can we get info on how to stand in our power at this time? And yes, you can. And we will likely end this podcast then, um, go over a few announcements and then close. But if, if you want to stand in your power, the council says, stop looking at the external world in a way that disempowers you. Put your, your vision primarily on your creative abundance right now. If you want to be in your power, what talents do you want to share with the world? Um, you know, I had an interesting question come about on my Patreon channel um, where someone was saying, you know, we want to be more 5D. We want to be more awakened, but we can't do that while we're just struggling to pay our mortgage and to buy food and not knowing where our next paycheck literally will come from. And many people were nodding and saying, yes, that is my struggle as well. That is a this year struggle, right? You're not always going to be in that struggle, right? You're not. So the council says, if you want to be in your power, it's un understandable that you feel powerless when your focus is just on survival. It's a fair point, but simultaneously, it's a really good idea to shift the mindset, to shift your mindset from victim mentality to, if you don't believe you're empowered, um, to curious. If you don't feel empowered, be in wonder, be curious, share your talents, you know, particularly you healers and channels of this world, share your talents, share them for small amounts of money or for free, do what you can, right? And, and then watch that abundance return to you because you're giving and when you give, you receive. So serve in a way that doesn't exhaust you, share your talents, and be in a positive, uplifting mindset, um, tap into the soul, create alchemy invocations to ask for an influx of creative abundance to become available to you, and focus on that. That's what we need to take our power back. If everyone really goes into that, it would be so wonderful, right? No, XRP is not in a good cycle, but we've already been over that, Jose. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's just not going anywhere anytime soon. All right. Cardano, we already covered. It's going somewhere, but very, very slowly. <laughs> very is like a snail space, but it is moving. It is moving slowly. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't feel that that asteroid, the Apophis, I, I've been watching that one for a while with the council. 
And I did see that it touched down on the West Coast, but not in 2029. So, and then some people are saying like 2036. Um, we actually got year 2031 on that, but it broke off. It wasn't like the fullness of it because Apophis is huge. Do your research on it. Um, it broke off. So it's like a small portion of it hitting. And that's a part of the problems with some loss in the coastline there. Um, that has also been predicted by most of our humans from the future and almost everyone the channeling they mention it. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. I'm sorry that I can't get to everyone. Um, some people are starting to leave me some pretty nasty comments like, don't you care about Africa? And don't you care about this country? And the only thing I do is take the majority of the questions from the people who follow me live and from my patrons. That's what I do. So if you're here live and you're asking about your countries, I try my best to get to all of it, but it's a very time restrained situation. And if you notice, like sometimes I will cover Africa in one video and then South Africa in another video. And then like there will be something in each video, particularly in the world predictions, um, you, you want to like follow them because there could be something in there for you. If you go backwards, like if I didn't catch you today, go backwards and see if it's in the last one and you'll find more there. Okay. All right. Um, I do want to remind you that we have a powerful masterclass on um, that public event is called foundations of astral travel for healing. Um, and it's where the, the group of elders that we're channeling are called the guardians of time and they are wonderful. They are the guardians of the Akashic records and the creators of time. So we're going to be working with those beautiful beings coming up this weekend. Uh, if you are a patron, you get a special 30% discount off of that. So please do reach out for your unique discount code. If you're not, that's fine too. It's right on my website at PamelaAirland.com. And insofar as the last humans from the future that we did, he was, um, or he is a financial advisor and um, Wall Street financial advisor and crypto expert. And he gave his unique take on so many different investments and money as a whole um, for this year. He gave his unique um, take over the course of the next four years. He gave predictions um, over on my Patreon channel at tier one. His name is Josh. So I hope you enjoy that as well. And um I'll probably put like some tiny little clips up so you could see some of it, but it was long and there's a lot of great information that I can't put all out here because YouTube gets super funny about it. Super funny about it, really. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys really soon. I love you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye-bye.